Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be creating some custom brush-on techniques inside of After Effects. Using these methods, you're gonna have full control over the motion, the size, the texture, the density of these brush strokes. You can use this technique to reveal layers or to brush on text. You can do just about anything. Just glorp some globs onto your canvas. If you enjoy learning about this kind of thing, motion design, visual effects, After Effects, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you can brush up on your After Effects skills. I've made a terrible pun, so it's time to start the tutorial. Now, before we jump in here, I just wanna let you know this tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. If you like learning, and I assume you do because you're watching this, then you will love Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of courses on dozens of topics. There's so much information in there taught by quality people uh, like me. I have some courses on there. A premium membership to Skillshare gives you unlimited access. You could be taking all of the courses all the time. You can really expand your creative skill set, jump into areas you wouldn't have even considered doing before. The variety of courses on Skillshare is just truly boggling. Personal growth, professional skills, they even have lifestyle and productivity courses. In this tutorial, we're talking about making fake brush strokes, but if you want to do real brush work, painting, calligraphy, they have experts teaching that on there too. Experts like Leah Gorin, who's teaching gouache techniques. It's perfect for beginners like me, who used to pronounce that word as gauche. And Skillshare is incredibly affordable. Annual plans start at just $10 a month, which is pretty great compared to in-person classes or workshops. So since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can enjoy two months of free premium membership if you use the link in the description. The link is skl.sh slash ecabrams9. Link in the description, click that and enjoy two free months of Skillshare. We're gonna be using a methodology that really closely mimics the way Photoshop's brush tool actually works. We're gonna to have to start by creating the shape of our brush head. This is gonna be very subjective, but I'll show you my favorite technique to make this happen. So we're gonna start by creating a new composition and it's gonna be quite small. It's gonna be 240 by 240 pixels. If you're making your brush head, you only need it to be as large as the amount of detail that you want in that brush. The larger this is, the more taxing it's gonna be on your system. Also, it's only one frame long. So you only need the one frame because the brush head itself is not going to be changing over time. We might modify it depending on how hard or soft we think the brush is pressing at a certain moment, but this shape is not going to change. And we'll give this a name like brush shape. So here's our single frame of brush shape. What do we make this out of? Well, we start by creating a new solid and that solid is going to be black, we'll say. Make it the comp size, hit OK. This first one is just gonna sit in behind and act as kind of a plate in the back to help us clean this up later. So let's duplicate that, and this will be our fractal brush. We're gonna use an effect called fractal noise. So we're gonna apply fractal noise and create this lovely cloud of fractal noise. And we're gonna modify this to look like the brush we want. We're gonna go down to dynamic. We are going to up the contrast to like 1300, big contrast. I'm gonna lower the brightness down and we're gonna invert this. So we end up with these kind of wispy little chunks everywhere. And now maybe most importantly, we're gonna scale this down to maybe like 17, maybe a little bit larger, smaller, something in that area. That's how I created my brush. But this is probably the most subjective part, creating this shape. If you wanted to make this like a fan brush, you'd probably make something that is narrow and tall, or you might make something that's square if you were making like a marker. So defining this shape is gonna be very important to the rest of the process. One thing to keep in mind is that if you want a lot of streaks, a lot of variety, you want to leave these holes, these chunky little holes everywhere. So certainly the shape of the brush is not gonna be a square, it's gonna be a circle. So I'm gonna go up here, create a mask, double clicking on the ellipse tool, twirling into the mask properties. And we were gonna bring in the expansion, maybe something like 50, there we go, pinch it in. And now the edge of this brush is too clean, so why don't we roughen it up? And we're gonna use roughen edges to make that happen. Leaving all the settings the same, we're just gonna increase the border, the area that is getting roughened up, we'll increase that up to 90. So now we have this fairly rough brush. So on top of this, we need to start clamping down and expanding some of these values. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer to apply some effects to all of this stuff. The first one is going to be levels, and that's gonna provide us with this nice little graph up here. And I'm gonna drag the input black to after this big hump, and I'm gonna to try to get the input white 
around the same spot. So you can see we're crushing the values into the middle, increasing the contrast. The next thing we wanna do is shift the channels. So shifting the channels is going to allow us to take the alpha information from say the luminance, turning everything that is black into transparent. And then to get rid of all this little subtle gradation in here, this, this value shift from black to white, we can just take all of these other channels and set them to fully on. So now everything is white and everything is either opaque or transparent. Now you're probably wondering, well, why did you have to put that black solid back there if you're making everything transparent anyway? Well, without the black solid back there, things get a little bit wacky. It starts to look kind of like this. So the black solid helps us clamp and control values back there. So in the end, we end up with this as our brush shape. Now, of course, we've just made this brush entirely procedurally inside of After Effects, but you could use all kinds of methods. You could just take a photo of some daubs on paper. You could actually go into Photoshop and take some of those brushes and just click once around the screen. However you do it, it's totally fine. Personally, I like to keep things procedural inside of After Effects in case I wanna come back and make a change. Keeping things non-destructive and flexible is one of the things I enjoy about After Effects in general. But now that we've got this shape, we need to do something with it. Let's smear some paint around. We're gonna make a new composition and we're gonna be working in an HDTV 1080 24 frames a second composition. I'm only mentioning the frames per second because that's gonna feed into some calculations we have to do later. I'm gonna call this the basic stroke and we'll do a more complex one as well. But let's just start with a basic stroke and let's keep this on for maybe two seconds. So we're gonna bring our brush shape out onto the canvas, wonderful. And I'm gonna bring up my proportion grid and I'm gonna start it over here. So what happens when the brush hits the paper? Well, it's gonna smear across. We're gonna keyframe its position as it moves across. We're gonna keyframe its opacity as it touches the canvas and we're gonna keyframe its, and we're gonna keyframe its scale because as a brush gets pressed into the canvas, it kind of expands and as it lifts off, it gets smaller. So we're gonna keyframe all those things and we're gonna use an effect to make sure that all the instances, every frame of this hangs out. So first with this layer, we're gonna go layer, time, freeze frame, and then drag this out, drag it out so that this brush lasts for all of the two seconds. And I think starting at frame five, we're gonna call up the position, scale, and T for opacity. And you know what, let's get rotation in there as well because the brush will probably rotate as it goes along. So we're gonna put keyframes for all of those. And then let's go ahead to maybe frame 35. You can see over here our time and then our frame number below it is at 35. So we know that we're taking 30 frames to go across. Keep that number in mind, it'll come in handy later. So at this point, I would like the brush to be over here. So I'm just gonna drag it across and that's setting a new keyframe. Then I'm gonna easy ease that by hitting F9. I'm gonna probably go into the graph editor here and maybe drag this handle a little bit, you know, get that influence up a little bit so that it's slowing as we come to the end. Nice gentle brush stroke, wonderful. The scale, I think will start a little bit smaller, maybe around 70, and then we'll probably end here. Maybe we'll end at maybe like a, maybe at like 90 or something. So it's like the brush is getting pushed into the page as it goes across. Opacity wise, I think the opacity is gonna start at zero, right, because there's nothing. And then a few frames in, we're gonna be at like 50%. And then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna run out of, we're gonna start to run out of paint on the brush. Maybe we'll go down to like 30. Oh no, we're still running out of more paint. We're keep, keep running out of paint. I'm gonna go down to 20%. So this is just going along. Oh, we'll run out of paint as we get to the end. Okay, good. And rotation wise, let's just have this rotate uh, 45, 45 degrees as it whooshes across and we'll probably ease that as well. So hitting F9 to ease that. So right now, this is not a brush stroke, not at all. This is just a weird clump moving across. So we're gonna go new adjustment layer and we're gonna add an effect on here called the echo. Now what the echo is gonna do is gonna create more instances of that brush as it goes across. So the first thing we wanna do is change the echo time. This is the difference in time between each echo. I know just from doing some math that I want this to be negative 0.003, which is gonna be very close together. And we need to figure out what the maximum number of echoes is between here at the start and here at the end. So we have 30 frames and the echo time is 0 0.0003. If we do a little multiplication, a little bit of division, we come out to around 420 is what you need to go from one to the other. So at 420, by the time we get to the end, 
the next frame is when we start to lose those first brush strokes. Now, something that's kind of important is you can see these little check, 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 all these little marks here. We're gonna try to smooth that away using a bunch of other, other effects. But if this kind of situation is becoming untenable for you, you might need to increase the number of echoes and decrease the echo time to get these things scrunched closer together. But we are approaching more of a brush stroke. Look, it kind of looks like a brush stroke, right? I think so. Some other things that we want to add in here is the echo operator is going to be set to composite in front or composite in back. We don't need it to be adding to each other. And the starting intensity can be like 0.3. It doesn't need to be so intense. This will preserve some more of that detail of that brush shape that we worked on. So now we need to stack some more effects on here to kind of smooth out some of this. The first one for me is of course a Gaussian or Gaussian blur, however you want to pronounce that word. And just a little bit of blur on here makes that checking kind of go away. So it looks a lot smoother, a lot more consistent. Well, now it's a bit too blurry. So I'm going to use a levels adjustment. I'm going to drop some levels on here so that we can kind of clamp these values. So I'm going to go to the alpha and I'm going to squeeze these values into the middle, squeezing the values. Now, how much you squeeze these values is going to be pretty subjective. Actually, all of this is subjective. If you want it to look exactly like mine, that's fine. But you really need to play around with this to get the exact look that you're looking for. And of course, levels is only one way to clamp the alpha. You might use a mat of some kind. You might use curves instead. I like levels. Levels is nice and simple, has this graph. And quite frankly, if you're going to be using a lot of instances of this, you want to be using the simplest effects you can. Finally, I'm going to drop on here another rough in edges, setting the border down to two. I'm going to set the edge sharpness down to zero so it doesn't look too crispified. And this is kind of what we end up with. This is the situation we end up with, with this streak blorping onto the screen. You're going to want to play around with these values to find what makes the brush stroke look that you are specifically after. One thing that I like to add in here, just to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture to it, is in the actual brush shape, I like to add a ramp, a gradient ramp in here, just because when you're applying paint to a brush, if you've mixed the paint, if it isn't one solid color of paint, then you're going to end up with some variation from the top to the bottom of that brush, or you might swirl it around or do something. But bringing that kind of dimensionality into the stroke can be very helpful. Well, whoop de do. We now have one straight stroke line. That's fantastic. You can use it all sorts of places, like over top of this frame, but I think we can do better. Let's get a little bit more advanced and start moving that brush around in a little bit more of an exciting way. So there are really only three more things I want to cover here. One is how to retime this and composite it. The second is how to do something more interesting than a straight line. And the third is how to colorize these things. So Let's make a comp to throw these things out on. It's HDTV, okie doke. We'll just take our basic stroke and we'll drop it out here. One of the first things is you need this to last forever. So we're gonna go layer, time, enable time remapping. And we want to control how fast each of these strokes comes on. If you're gonna put a whole bunch of them on here and you want some variety, you wanna be able to quickly alter the speed of these strokes. The best way to go about it is to double click into this composition go to the end point when the stroke is resolved, return to your assembly composition here called comp one, and we're gonna set a keyframe in the time remapping there. And then we go back inside and set the playhead at the beginning, go back to this comp, you'll see the playhead has moved, set a keyframe there and delete the inside and outside keyframes. So now when you extend the end point of that layer, this is on forever. And if you pinch together, these two keyframes, then you're pinching together the animation and you can extend the animation if you would like. Oh, that's nice and smooth. Let's say you want something a little bit more exciting than just a straight line though. You wanna really affect the character of this stroke. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the basic stroke, duplicate, and let's call this, I don't know, like an S stroke. So let's say we were going to write on the letter S. Well, we're gonna go into the S stroke here. We're gonna alter the positional path that this brush travels. And if you want a little guide out here, let's say you are gonna do some texts, then just go ahead and type out your letter, make it nice and large so you can see what you're doing. Knowing of course that you can always shrink down this asset when you composite it, but it's very difficult to expand it. 
So we're gonna put this giant S out here. We're gonna set it to a guide layer. We are bringing its opacity way down. And now we are just going to draw this on. Let's have it go from maybe the top to the bottom. Awesome. And change these to linear keyframes just for now. And that is not the direction we want it to go, but I'm gonna set a keyframe here in the middle. And now I'm gonna use my convert vertex tool to alter the Bezier handles of these points so that we can get this into kind of the shape that we want, maybe like this, maybe like that. And now we can just kind of play this back and see if that is the kind of character we want. <laughs> oh, very ghostly indeed. What I might do in this case is I might go layer, transform, and we're gonna auto orient along the path so that these nice long streaks along the curvature here might increase the rotation at the end though, just so we get kind of a nice little spiral shape going on. And something else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this middle point I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna say rove across time. It doesn't have a strict place in time, but it does have a strict place in space. And now we've got something, because I eased the position at the start and end, it's got more paint there because the brush is spending more time at the start and end. This kind of looks like a cool snake now that I think about it. <laughs> very, very cool, okay. That's the kind of thing that you can do by messing with the position. If you start messing around with the opacity, you're gonna start to get uh, more thick areas. It's like there's more paint being applied in them. And if you start messing around with the scale, then you're gonna start to get fatter areas of the line. So let's say if we just go here and we try to like thin out this top part and then it gets thicker here at the bottom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then maybe thins up a little bit right there. I'm into that. That's pretty neat. You do wanna be careful though that if you start making the brush go too fast, you end up with, again, this kind of checking situation, and then you'll probably need to go into those effect stacks. You might need to increase the blurriness to try to make that go away and then clamp it, or you can just try to slow it down, just try to slow down how this thing is going. Don't make it cover as much distance. Don't stretch it out too much. But that's how you make kind of more nuanced brush strokes. When you're compositing all of these things together, I highly recommend you simply duplicate an original stroke, one that's already out on the timeline, and then alt drag your other strokes in to replace it, because then all of that time remapping information is already preserved in there. And hopefully that works out. You can composite a whole lot of these things on top of each other and around each other, and it's very versatile and not super taxing on the machine. But let's get into colorizing this stuff. I like to make use of an effect called Colorama. In the intro example, here in the brush on letters, you see everything's black and white. And then when things finally got composited together, I recolored all of these strokes and we use something called Colorama to make that happen. You're able to remap the inputs. In this case, we're taking the alpha information and then we're combining it with the intensity, so the, the black and white levels, as well as the transparency levels. We're averaging those together, and then we are remapping those values to this kind of uh, tritone that's going from dark to bright to kind of mid, and that's how we get this kind of discoloration going on. But the really important thing is that you wanna click down here in Modify and uncheck Modify Alpha. So you can kind of see how chunkified it looks. If you do modify the alpha, don't do that. We spent so much time having this nuance of transparency, all of these details. Please leave them alone and do not modify the alpha unless you want to be remapping them and, and exploring more with Colorama. So that is it. Hopefully you didn't brush off this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, for spending some time with me here on the channel. If this is the kind of thing you like learning, then consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you know when we get new tutorials up here. I'd love to see what you make using these techniques. So maybe send them at me on Twitter. I'm at EC Abrams on there or at EC Abrams on Instagram. That's usually where I am around the internet. If you have trouble with this tutorial though, please let me know in the comments. I will try to get you through. I'll try to get to all the comments when I'm able. Also, if there are other subjects you'd like to see me cover on this channel, get at me and we'll try to get to it. If you want to get your hands on the example file that we worked up during this tutorial, it's available at evanabrams.com. You can find that in the cards or in the description. But that's it for me. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.